Welcome to the trenches. On today, we have a very special guest, the lead dog of the pack, Rams D-line coach, Eric Henderson. What up, Coach Henny? What's up, Bib? Man, you? appreciate you coming on, you know, chopping game with me and everything. How does it feel having to play this season during this COVID madness? I know you ain't even really got a chance to enjoy the stadium. Like, how's it been for you and the guys? It's been awesome, man. You know, uh, uh, obviously with all the stuff that you got going on with the restrictions, can't have fans, mm -hmm. and um, having to, you know, wear your mask all the time. You, you, you even got kind of comfortable with the whole mask process, but uh, not having fans, I mean, you know, once the game gets going, it, it's been good, mm -hmm. you know, but prior to the ball being kicked off, it's That's a little it. weird every week. Okay. And so it's been one of those deals where we try to tell our guys we have to provide our own energy. Mm -hmm. You know, we have to be able to generate what we're going to need to be able to get the, the job done that particular day, you okay. know, and so it's been challenging, but mm -hmm. fun. Okay. Know? Okay. And what are some of the things that you always instill in your guys? Well, one of the things that I look for or try to make sure I, you know, uh, you know, any defensive line group that I'm associated with, mm -hmm. you know, I want our group to, to represent uh, toughness, physicality, okay. um, you know, proper technique mm -hmm. and, and, and just a bunch of guys flying around, having fun, playing with energy. And, uh, and, and that's what we call our dog work mentality. Okay. You know, when you can play with that type of energy, toughness, physicality, mm -hmm. uh, and get the job done with the proper technique, mm -hmm. you know, the guys have been uh, truly exemplifying what it means to represent the dog work mentality. And it's been fun for us. On a whole nother level. <laughs> I ain't seen it like that before. Um, like I was saying a little bit before, when it's third down, yeah. I'm looking who, like, who is it coming from? Where is it coming from? Like, how did you get a group so seasoned? Do you think they kind of came in advanced? Or you, is it you and their motivation? Like, how do you guys, these guys get to go? And they go every play, but on right. third down, it's crazy. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a little bit of both. I mean, I'm just so fortunate as a position coach to have a group of guys that, that's, that's self-motivated, you know, that's hungry, uh, guys that understand that, you know, what's the task that we need to get done that particular week? Mm -hmm. And what's the, the plan that we're going to utilize to get the job done? You know, if we're going to attack the protection, this is how we're going to do it. And so we need to be excited about that. Mm -hmm. But the one thing we tell our guys is we have to earn the right to rush the passer. And the way you do that, you have to be able to stop the run. Mm -hmm. You know, if you can't stop the run, you're never going to be able to get after the quarterback. And so we take pride in stopping the run first, knowing that that would allow us opportunities oh, to rush that. on third down. And, and we feast. And we got to feast when we get those opportunities, man. And so, <laughs> you know, them, them cats been getting it in this year. And I'm, I'm just extremely proud of the guys, man. Okay, so having a guy like AD on the team, like, how is it having a guy in that room? Day one, did he always stand out? Or have you kind of seen him grow? Or, like, how was it being able to see a guy of this caliber? Because people say he's number one in the league. Like, yeah. how is it having that type of, of ego and – and really just respect around the league in your room that, yeah. and that you got to keep control well, man, of. He's a, he's an alpha dog, man. And, uh, you know, he's one of those guys that's just, he's a great, great person, you know. And I tell people all the time when I get asked this question, I'm just fortunate that uh, he's been raised the right way. When mm. you talk about his, his, his parents, his mom and his dad, and, you know, and the way that they've raised him as a young man to just have, you know, be so humble, have the respect that he have and be able to, uh, give that respect as well as receive that from his peers and from myself as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, it's earned. You know, he's earned that, man. And he's just been a guy that's done things the right way for so long that guys follow that. Mm -hmm. You know, and when you're a good person and you got a good heart and you treat people the right way, people respect that off GP. You know, and I think that's why he's uh, the, the person and the, and the player that he is. You know, mm -hmm. so it's fun having him around. And, uh, and, you know, we know he's the best to ever do it. You, you know, can tell period. that he, he got some whoopings and stuff early on. Huh? They was only tell early. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, hey, you know, he's been disciplined, uh -huh. man. He's been disciplined, been raised the right way, man. Okay. You know, just old school upbringing. But, you know, uh, 
you know, it's 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 paid dividends for him, you know, and uh, and I'm fortunate that I get a chance to to work with a guy like that. Okay. So, what's does one play in particular stand out that during the game that and that you seen him just go to work and you're like, this guy's different. Like, does one play really stand out? Not one play, man, because I see it every day in every, practice. Okay. What people don't understand is that the great players, you know, they 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 practice hard. You know, they they want to be coached, mm. and this guy doesn't get blocked in practice. Mm. You know, and so if you ain't getting blocked in practice. It ain't gonna happen in the game mm. either. <laughs> you know, and so you know they 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 he he requires uh, attention from opposing offenses. Um, and they have to be able to account for him, and sometimes it may take two and three, three guys accounting for him. And for him to still have the success and continue to be at the hierarchy of the league in terms of sacks and pressures and tackles for loss, with all of the attention, there's not been a player in the, in the history of the game that's, that's done that. The history. And so I just don't care what nobody got to say about <laughs> that because he's the best to ever do it. And I, I seen it. I'm looking at it every day. You, you know, know he coming. Ain't no doubt. And he still make it. A dog. Is there, is he a vocal person? Or who's a vocal leader in that group? Uh, he's very vocal amongst the defensive line group. But when you talk about, uh, you know, truly team oriented, mm -hmm. my guy like Michael Brock is, is, okay. is, a, is a true uh, leader. But... AD is a true leader, uh, but you know. So Michael Brockers. Michael Brockers is more of a team guy in terms of being a vocal, get the whole team okay. riled up type of guy. Aaron Donald and Brock, you know, really does an a excellent job in terms of controlling Showing. the defensive line room, mm. you know, and, and, and being leaders by example. Uh, which is what they both do well. Okay. You know, as well as being ultimate team guys. Man. Okay. Okay. So now tell me about the process of you even becoming a coach. Like, how did your coaching journey start off? Well, I, uh, when I got done playing, I, I played in the NFL. Uh, it was a rookie 2005 undrafted free agent. Um, played uh, college ball at Georgia Tech and uh, was fortunate to have the opportunity to play defensive end with the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm -hmm. And I was there from 2005 to uh, 2010. Uh, so, okay. You know, and um, it was around the time that the uh, the uh, the uh, lockout occurred. Okay. The uh, NFL lockout, um, and um, you know, after following that 2009 season, I pinched the nerve in my neck, was on injured reserve um, for the for the remainder of that season, mm. and when the lockout occurred. I went on to uh, a bunch of guys that were free agents in the NFL, yeah. went on to play in what was called the United Football League, the UFL. Okay. And, uh, you know, and, you know, me playing in the UFL was really probably some of the most fun that I've ever had. And it was at that time that I transitioned my mind to uh, knowing that I wanted to coach. Okay. You know, and so. Um, I reached out to a bunch of relationships. Yeah, because I, I kind of knew, you know, at that time, I mean, coming off an injury, the NFL being in a limbo, the league getting, you know, it, 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 it had ended up starting back throughout that the course of that season. realistic effect, like, let me be real. Yeah, okay. it was like the realistic effect, but it was also like, you know, hey, nobody's reached out to me yet. Coming off an injury, coming off a lockout, it's a different deal. You better get your mind right and have some shit in, in line, Next you one, know. Yeah. <laughs> and so it was one of those deals where you, you got to have your, 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 your you know, your uh, career intact in terms of knowing what's the next move. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was always a guy that saw coaching in my future, okay. uh, felt it as a player, and uh, I've always enjoyed it. Now, the biggest surprise has been that I've never known that I would enjoy coaching more than I did as a player mm. you know and and that's the that's the part that's been surprising but you know uh it's 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 awesome what you man. like more about coaching than playing well the difference is that you know as a player i assumed that i was going to play 10 years in the league mm -hmm. you know and when that didn't happen um you know i'm like shit. well i, I need to transition into coaching blah 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 i always saw the game differently right and so uh, 
when that opportunity presented itself mm -hmm. to uh, take a coaching job at Georgia Military College, which was a junior college in that Georgia right out in, in uh, southeast Georgia, right mm -hmm. outside of Atlanta, um, you know, that was, uh, it was just the, one of the best things that ever happened to me because it was where I learned how to recruit. It was where I learned how to uh, multitask because in the junior college, you're wearing all the hats. <laughs> you know, you're, you're the strength coach. You're the, the position coach, the uh -huh. outside linebackers, the safeties Making coach. Making sure the floor you clean know, coach. You're, 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 I'm, I'm cutting the grass. <laughs> I'm, I'm painting the fields. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did it all. And so it was humbling, but it was also uh, rewarding in a sense because I enjoyed every moment of being there. I had just came from the National Football League mm -hmm. as a player flying on the different planes. And in junior college, we get on the bus and drive 22 hours to New York. With the Atlanta. brown bag lunch. You know, and so <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, we would stop at, uh, at on road trips, we would stop at, Golden Corral as a team and go eat at Golden Corral. Get it, how you bus and so it was it was just one of those that grind, I embraced it. And I think when I embraced that and knew that I was helping young men achieve the ultimate goal of trying to get to a division one program, mm -hmm. you know, and being able to see those guys get to that program and flourish at the same time, mm -hmm. that was a level of enjoyment that was created and I was like, wow, it became addictive, you know? That's and when so, you feel like you really And, that, and that's like, when I, I knew coach. that this is this is my calling, okay. you know? And I'm I, when you're operating in your calling, I heard my pastor say this, uh, you know, a couple of years ago that when you're operating in your calling, it's, it's easy, you know? It's like, it's like, you know, it's, there's nothing stressful about it, mm -hmm. you know? It's just fun. It's just, I'm doing me, yep. you know? <laughs> I'm doing me. And so that's that's where my life is at this point, man. I'm just so blessed. I'm fortunate, um, and I'm operating in my calling, helping young men develop uh, on and off the field, mm -hmm. and just uh, enjoying every minute of it, baby. Okay. And how did you get from the was it you said Georgia military? Georgia military. Georgia college. military right. to being a GA. Like how how did you get that? I connection was uh going? well, you know, you got to have a little help along the way. Of course, you know, you know I mean, there, none of us we're fooling ourselves if we think we do all of these things along. And that's why when you get in position to be able to be a blessing to other people, you need to do that, you know. And so uh, I, I never take those situations lightly. I was extremely fortunate, mm -hmm. you know, while I was coaching at Georgia Military College. Uh, Glenn Spencer, who was my um, uh, uh, my position coach at Georgia Tech, where I played, Play, okay. he was the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma State. And when he uh, he was the co-defensive coordinator prior to me uh, getting there. Okay. So after that season in 2012, at I believe at Georgia Military College, mm -hmm. I get the call and and Glenn's like, uh, hey Eric, you know, I'm, you know. Um, you know, about to get the job at Oklahoma State. Was wondering if you wanted to come, you know, help out with these defensive line Looked and recruit, for you, recruit right? some, uh, ahead, some, some, some uh, <laughs> guys out of New Orleans. You know, and so, you know, I was extremely fortunate and excited about that man, and uh, and that was uh, that was that was history from that 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 moment on. So I took the job at Oklahoma State and. You know, did a really good job as a graduate assistant in uh, quality control, recruiting the whole South, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, and and really trying to help change that program to, you know, to status that, you know, uh, obviously you can see that they're still always ranked uh, mm -hmm. among the uh, nation's top 25. So I was a GA, I was GA at Idaho State. And before I got in there, a lot of people used to be like, Either you're gonna love your GA experience or you're gonna hate it. There was right. nobody in between. Like, did you love it? Did you hate it? You know, I, I I love mine, you know, but there's moments that you 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 hate with you know, you hate it as well. Mm -hmm. But those are also moments that you're growing. Okay. You know, and so you don't know that at the time, you just kind of <laughs> like go through it and it's like, man, this some bullshit. You know, <laughs> but you know, when it, but when you can just keep your eyes on the prize mm -hmm. and you just go through the grind, it's always going to be rewarding. It's like the saying, you know, uh, you know, what's the saying that, you know, uh, 
uh, after after rain and sunshine. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, okay. you go through that whole little deal, and then you get to enjoy and reap the benefits okay. of your hard work. You know. Um, Whenever that happens, mm -hmm. and uh, man, I just got to stay man. with it, though, baby. Okay. You got to stay with it, you know. And you got to make that commitment. When you make the commitment that this is what I'm doing, it becomes easier to stay with it. There was distractions along the way, whether it be relationships, whether it be grad school, mm -hmm. you know, because you also want to take advantage of of those opportunities as well. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be able to do those things, and and it's just a strength builder, man. And I saw it for what it was, mm -hmm. embraced that, and then it worked out for me. Okay, yeah. perfect. So if you had a room full of GAs right now, what's one word of advice you think you can give them that, something that could have even helped you or you think that can just help all the new up and coming coaches that's, I would, I that's would going say, through that process? I would say, I would say uh, be detailed in your approach, um, meaning that because I, you see a lot of the times young guys that are graduate assistants you know, because the job is so strenuous or you may be working for someone who's trying to grow you, but maybe growing you in a way that they was forced to grow. Mm -hmm. And it may not be the most pleasing thing to you, mm -hmm. you know, and sometimes those those uh, situations can be miserable. Mm -hmm. um, stick with it. You know, you've made the commitment to getting in this this field. You know, it ain't going to always be easy. And there's times that it ain't going to always be hard as well. Mm -hmm. And so you have to just make your mind up to stick with it. You have to, uh, you know, take your job serious. Um, you know, be thorough in your work mm -hmm. in terms of your preparation. Um, you know, don't take anything for granted. You know, and treat people the right way. Gotcha. And when you do those things, man, you know, what goes around comes around, come around, you know, and, it, and, it, and it'll it'll work out for you. Okay. You know, and so uh, if I could leave guys with that, man, I, that's that's what it was, you know, because that's that's the approach that I took. I just try to treat people the right way, man. I tried to make sure that I competed in everything I did. Mm -hmm. You know, I wanted to be the best graduate assistant in the country. That was truly my mindset. Mm -hmm. And how was I going to do that? Well, I had the opportunity to recruit. And I wanted to be the best recruiter in the country as a graduate assist assistant. Mm -hmm. And I did that. That's what it was. <laughs> you know, so it's just total domination. Everything I did was with a dog work mentality. Okay. You know, even when I wasn't getting paid to be doing what I was doing. Just still doing You put more. me out there on the road, I'm going to get it. Mm -hmm. Period. Because I believe in myself. I believe in my relationships i believe in treating people the right way mm -hmm. and when you do those things man you know people believe in you and that's all it was fortunate that people believed in me mm -hmm. and so now i'm here sitting down with you <laughs> you know and i appreciate no it doubt. i appreciate no it doubt. i appreciate it so this dog work i see coach jay tagging it espn even did an article on it when did this come like when did you want it to make it your thing like where did it come from really it's it's been in my heart man it's just one of it's always been you know something that i believed in it's been a mentality that i knew that i had i just never articulated it you, you know and never it, yeah. had a name for it. <laughs> but you know i know we we're dogs yeah. at the end of the day yeah. you know I'm like uh, i'm a dog you got me stuck. You, you, you feel me so that's what it is you know and so you know mm. the way that that's the that's just the mindset that i wanted the group that uh i'm a part of to have you know it's an it's an approach that you know we're not going to take anything for granted we're going to be thorough in everything mm -hmm. that we do we're going to do it with the best technique you know, and we want to be the best, mm -hmm. you know, and then it doesn't matter who you are. If you step on the field as a, as a, as a L.A. Rams defensive line, you better be a dog. You better play with the proper technique. Mm -hmm. You better get the job done, period. You know, and so I just wanted a bunch of hungry cats out there, man. Hungry dogs out there, mm -hmm. not cats, because yeah, dogs cats. don't eat with cats, <laughs> you know. Uh, and so at the end of the day, man, uh, you know, that's that's what it was. And that was the approach that we wanted to take going into 2020, you know, with this whole COVID deal, trying to figure out a way to be creative, to generate some juice mm -hmm. when you look ahead, knowing that 
We were going to have to figure this thing out on and our ain't own. Ain't no juice around. Ain't so no we gotta, juice around. We got to do the press. We got to be the ones to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's what dog work was, man. It was just perfect timing for it. You know, uh, you know, I truly believe that the Lord don't make mistakes, man. And it was just mm -hmm. perfect timing. It was real. It was genuine. Wasn't anything forced. It was just who we are. You know, last year in training camp, you know, we talked about we got our work done in training camp. We worked out of the dog pit, you know, mm -hmm. so that was something that was just all about this dog started stuff. boiling up you know then. it just balled up and mm -hmm. then it was that man what dogs we dogs <laughs> and we working you know dog work okay. man it's dog work right here you know it went from d-o-g to d-a-w-g you, had to put you know had to put a little sauce on that <laughs> too. you know and so that's what that's what it, what it is man so Dude. it's dog work all day babe you know uh dogs don't eat with cats mm -hmm. man oh so i heard you speak on technique a lot nah. you know I, i'm big on technique as well so when you're looking for these linemen that's coming in during the draft process right. what are some techniques that you're looking for that you want a guy to already you know naturally have yeah you if you, you really want guys that are not that uh that uh, are naturally able to play with their hands okay you know i like to see guys of guys that are that are that able to use their hands man are violent at the point of attack you know, uh, you're going to coach pad level the rest of your life. So yeah. I don't necessarily harp on those things, especially when you got bigger guys that are just taller and sometimes, you know, so you just work on those things, those drills daily to mm -hmm. try to help those guys out. But you want guys that can run that are, that, you know, that, that can play with the with the with the balance and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you know, pad level. Uh, you know the violent hands. I just want guys with that that, that attitude. This, the, the, the you know, natural stuff the, that the, it seemed like a cliche. The thing, there you go. But er, everybody always say it. But players be like, well, yeah. they take it as a for granted. It's like everybody's saying this for a reason. Like, right. We really need it's the hands. It's the lockout. You got to control the block. No but question. Everybody always take it for granted. Like that's like the the cliche answer. So. Just to give a little game to to some of my young guys. Right. What, what's three things that you that you would tell them that they need to work on just right away for some high school high school getting ready to enter college guys mm -hmm. well you you better be physical okay you know you better be physical mm -hmm. you know and a lot of times that start within you know that is a mindset you gotta want it you know in order to play defensive line you gotta have a different mindset i don't care who you are you can't just be you know nice all the time you know, there's nothing wrong with being a good person. Mm -hmm. But when it comes down to playing D-line, that's different. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I see it. So you got to be able to flip that switch mm -hmm. on and off. Mm -hmm. All right, you got to be play with violent hands, right? Those are things that you want the guys that are able to do. And even if there's guys that aren't able to have, they may have athletic traits and ab different abilities, yep. you, can, you can teach guys to get better with their hands. Okay. So I don't necessarily like X a guy off because he's not... Might you know, be a, little a young smaller. guy, yeah, okay. who's a little raw and haven't been taught those things. Okay. You know, I don't, I don't completely, you know, get rid of a guy okay. from it for that. But uh, and you want guys that have certain traits, whether it be, you know, uh, body type, size, okay. length, you know, speed, um, you know, things that your defense that you need that can help, you know, the scheme. Uh, okay that you guys are running on defense. And so those are the things that, that we look for, that I look for, um, and, uh, and obviously good people that's gonna fit in a room with a bunch of other dogs. Where do you see yourself in five years from now? Do you kind of D-line yeah. coach? Are you looking to move up? Where are you? Yeah, you know, I, uh, um, you know, I get asked this question a lot, man. And, and I don't want to sound cliche in my response, but I truly feel like, you know, uh, you know, because I'm the defensive line coach of the Rams right now, mm -hmm. all I want to do is just be the best defensive line coach in the league. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's, That's it. truly what I want to do right now. Okay. And whatever happens from that uh, moment on, you know, it, it is what it is. Okay. I know that when you have success in this league, good things come to you, and I'm aware of that. Okay. And so, you know, if I'm fortunate to be in position to where something presents itself, and if it's the right situation, then we'll we'll look at it, you know. But my whole mindset truly is to take the dog work mindset 
and give it all to my guys. I mean, I, I love these cats. I really do. You know, I love every one of them. And so I just want to give them all of me. So I don't got time to worry about what else going to happen. What might happen, okay. You know, um, I like that. you know, that's just what it is. I like to operate, you know, in the moment and kind of just be present with my guys. Okay. And I think they can feel that. And that's just what it is, man. Okay. Nah, nah, that's, I, I <laughs> yeah. all the way get it because sometimes you trying to look at your future. You ain't giving you game then, planning then, for that there you and taking go. away from yeah, what you, I, you in get, I just don't believe you can do both. Okay. I don't believe you can be have the success that you want if you're not truly dedicated all the way to, into it. Yeah, you gotta be. That's okay. that's my opinion. Okay, you know? nah, so I, that's that's good. Yeah. So being 37, when guys start creeping up on your age, does that get weird from a, a coach's standpoint? Because you know, usually like the typical coach, usually older than you, but like. You know, y'all head coach is even young, so it's kind of like, I always want to know, does that get weird or... Guys, when you say that, you mean like the players, when you got yeah. older players? When some players know? could be reaching, you know, 34 and 35, and it's like, yeah. you sometimes, you know, as a coach, you I need you to get this job done. If you're not doing it, I got to correct you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes with it could just be an ego or it's just, he might feel like you're not talking to him right. Like, how how is that being well, sometimes, you know, when, these are grown men. Yeah. It's different when it's a college coach because in the, the day you still a kid. Like these are no people doubt. with two, three, and four kids. Like how is that? How is that sometimes? It's I know funny it can get you tricky. say that, but you know, at the you know, first of all, it starts with relationships. Okay. You know, you're fooling yourself if you think you're gonna go into any room in the National Football League and just think that you're not you're gonna be able to 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 handle guys a certain type of way without having built a relationship <laughs> with a guy, yeah. you know? So cats got to know that you genuinely care about them and that, you know, there's no agenda in your approach. Okay. Like, I'm not trying to get nothing from you. You okay. know, all I want is to, to help you be the best that you can be. Okay. You know, I got goals for each and every one of my guys. Okay. And I talk to them about it. I personally talk to them about it. And then I share it you know, as a group, because I want the group to know that these are the goals that I have for Marquise Copeland. Okay. You know, these are the goals I have for Morgan Fox. How can we get this done? Mm -hmm. And then now there is a collective effort in terms of helping everybody get better. Okay. And when everybody can help everybody get better with no agenda, now you roll it. Okay. You know, and I believe that. That's my approach. Mm -hmm. And so that allows you when you have guys that are a little bit older to be able to uh, be more relaxed in their approach because they know that coach truly care okay. and there's no agenda. Yeah. And so I don't have a reason to have an ego, you know? And so I think that that's probably uh, why it's not a big deal um, for me or I haven't ran into any issues with mm -hmm. that, thank God. But at the end of the day, you know, um, I'm being 37 years old. Typically, you don't have another player that's 37. So even if you got a guy that's 34 years old, well, hell, I'm still older than you. <laughs> you know, the day, you know, and so and there's just a mutual respect. respect. With, you know, this is my position coach, just like, you know, my head coach is 33 years old. You know, well, there's still a mutual respect. Mm -hmm. I may be older than him. But I respect him because he's the hierarchy. Mm -hmm. And so you, you just understand those things. Man, and the and, yeah, and yep. it's the same thing with players, man. So okay. it's not bad at all. It's pretty cool. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, appreciate you, man. man ain't appreciate no doubt, the game. Dude. You appreciate the know. love. It's yeah. all. <laughs> Eric Henderson, welcome to the trenches, man. I appreciate it. Man, I appreciate shit, it, baby. Shit. Trench Thank work, you. love what you're doing, man. Uh, keep that up with these cats. You know, anytime you need something, you know I'm right up the street, baby. We I'm good. gonna call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna call. We good, man. Appreciate well, thanks you. Thanks for having me.